Hello, my friend. Before we start this amazing episode, I want to invite you to the personal Patreon page of this podcast. If you love what's being done here and want to keep the podcast and the meditations free to the public, then you can come on over to our brand new community on Patreon and donate $11.11 a month and all proceeds will go towards keeping this free, keeping this going. Plus, we'll be building a community together and I'll give you bonus material. You can explore this option in the description of this podcast or just go to patreon.com slash Dr. Reese. Let's begin. Welcome to Inner Peace with Dr. Reese, a program that can help you become liberated in the modern world. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kevin W. Reese. Welcome to episode number 110. And like I do every five episodes, it's time for us to have a one-on-one talk. I think I'm ready to tell you what I've been through. I guess this is a continuation of episode number 90, being vulnerable. When I hopped on this podcast and told you what I was feeling on episode 90, I was just hitting the start of that darkness. In fact, if you go back and listen, you'll hear how emotional I am. That's right when it was the egg was cracking open. Mm. You may want to go listen to that episode if you didn't, so that this one makes more sense, right? So as it turns out, those symptoms that I was having back in January and February were nutritional deficiencies. I was searching for help, like what's wrong with me? Why is my why is my body malfunctioning? What's what's going on here? And I spoke to a friend who I went to school with and he was like, it sounds like you're nutrient deficient. And he gave me three doctors online to go look at so I can learn about this nutritional deficiency in in more depth. Because I was trained more in the cleansing, in the healing, in the cellular regeneration. I wasn't trained in actual vitamins, minerals, and fatty acids. So one of the doctors he told me to study was Dr. Joel Wallach. And I have him coming on the podcast in a few episodes. But Dr. Wallach just blew my mind. I I just went down the rabbit hole and I learned... And what it came down to was 90 essential nutrients. And I'm like, oh, whoa. (laughs) So I I went to a a nature path. I got some blood work done. And guess what? I was low in B12. I was low in D. I was low in A. I was low in F, which is essential fatty acids. And I was low in magnesium. I was low in calcium. We're still testing to see if I'm low in copper. You know, one of my symptoms was my stomach was bloated. It, it was just bloating for no reason. And I, I'd never really experienced that. Another symptom was... Uh, there was a burning sensation when I peed. And that was scary too. I went to urgent care. I got tested, came back clean for no STDs. 
no urinary tract infection, nothing. And it's like, what, what is happening? And being a practitioner myself, now I'm thinking, okay, is it my kidneys? Is it my prostate? What's happening? What about my stomach? Do I have SIBO? Do I have IBS? What's happening? And it's just the fear just kept going and going and going. They say doctors make the worst patients because you know, I have knowledge of anatomy and disease and I'm just like, oh, what's happening to me, you know? And I'm just in this dark state of fear. What's happening to me? And then my uncle died in mid-March. My mother had an injury. And the dog, <laughs> who is 14 and a half, the old dog, he uh, he was having symptoms. And we're thinking, you know, is this it? And this all kind of happened at, at one time. And it was a lot for me because I'm supposed to be like the man of the house. And I'm like, oh, how how can I take care of things if I can't take care of myself right now? And that hit me really, really hard. I guess you could say that triggered me into a very dark place. And then it happened. I lost my sleep. I can't begin to tell you what that's like. Everyone's had an all-nighter a few times in their life. I get that. But I literally lost my sleep. The body will sleep on its own. There's no way to not sleep. Um, But I went into a state of Sleeping about two, maybe three times a week, if I was lucky. And this induced the fear to a whole other level. My mind would wander and it just went dark. It went really dark. There were thoughts of killing myself. There were thoughts of what am I going to do when my parents aren't here anymore? There were thoughts of what am I going to do financially? There were thoughts of why, you know, why, what's happening to me? Is this permanent? One of the mistakes I made was going on Facebook and going into the groups. (laughs) I'd go into the insomnia groups and that just scared the snot out of me. It was scary, man. I, you know, thank God for my mom. My mom held me down. She would go for walks with me around the neighborhood or there were a few nights where, you know, she would sit with me uh, not at night, but like the early morning, like, you know, four or five in the morning because I was up, no sleep, and she was just waking up and, you know, she'd watch a movie with me or something, you know. I just didn't know what to do. Um, but th- thank God I had my mom and then I had Andy. Andy is a social worker. He's a friend of a friend. Um... And I reached out to him for help. And he saw someone in need. And I crap you not. He hopped on FaceTime with me every morning for two, maybe three weeks. And he just talked me through things. Assured me this isn't permanent. And to just keep living. Keep living. Keep doing your work. Keep going. 
you don't sleep, no big deal. Just do some work. The body will go back to sleep when it wants. He was trying to teach me acceptance. But thank God for him. He didn't even charge me. He didn't take my info for insurance, nothing. He just was an angel that just helped me. And we're still friends to this day. This is back in March 2021. There were days when he would look at me through the FaceTime and he'd be like, you don't look like a guy who hasn't slept in two days. So, probably because I was meditating a lot. And I was going through something spiritual, I guess you can say. One night, I was laying there, sleepless night. And something just crossed my field. It hit me like a ton of bricks. Dark night of the soul. Huh. It's interesting because that topic has come up on this podcast at least three, four times to that point. And it never occurred to me that I could be going through a Dark Night of the Soul episode. But it did that night. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I'm like, holy crap. That's what this is. It's got to be what this is. And so usually Dark Night of the Soul happens to someone who has a spiritual practice Or a deep connection with God. And then they go through this spiritual depression episode. It's not something that uh, a typical person just goes through randomly. That would be depression itself. So that made me feel a little better. Like, oh, I'm going through something, but it's going to end. Because I'm being worked on, essentially. My ego... And my soul, they're wrestling. Something's going on that put me into a state of fear. And in hindsight, now that I'm ahead of it, I can look back and in hindsight, I can say it was the loss of my health that was the trigger. That started the fear. I basically spent all of February scared. What's going on with me? What's happening? And I'd get on the phone with people and I'd talk. And a lot of my colleagues in the detox industry, they'd just be like, oh, you got to detox. You got to detox. You got to keep cleaning. You're going to be okay. Keep going. And I'm like, it didn't feel right. Once I found out I had nutritional deficiency, that changed everything. But I'll come back to that. So here I am, scared out of my wits in February. I went to the emergency room because I wasn't feeling well. And then I spent March scared out of my mind, anxiety. My uncle dies. One of my close cousins got COVID and she wasn't doing well. That scared me. My mom had an injury. The dog wasn't feeling well. And I I was not feeling well and I just my whole world was rocking I didn't know what was happening and I lost my sleep and I went through some really dark nights and then something else happened that was significant one night I was laying there trying to sleep I don't remember if I was sleeping or I was trying to sleep and my calves Charlie Horse thought they tightened up It started with one of them and eventually the other one. And it was pretty darn painful. The next day, they were still sore. They were still tight. This happened two or three nights in a row. And my calves were strained. I don't know if I made them worse by trying to stretch them. I I have no idea. But my calves became so bad 
painful and tight that I was limping around the house. And I definitely couldn't go on my walks around the neighborhood anymore. And that's one of my things, one of my favorite things to do in the world. So now I go into a state of grief because now I lost my walking on top of everything else. It's just my whole world was crumbling. Yeah. My osteopath, the DO, and thank good I... I suggest everyone go get a good DO. They're definitely great for the muscular skeleton system and just so much better than an MD. At this point, I'm not going to the MD. I I swore off MDs. I went to my DO. They sent me to the hospital to get scans to make sure it wasn't blood clots. That was scary uh, because I do have varicose veins. Uh, so I came back negative for blood clots, thank God. And so that ruled that out. And now it, we're just down to the muscle, the calf muscles. And the back is also clenched up and bad. And so it just seemed like everything's happening all at one time. And I'm just like, what's next? What's going to happen next? Sleep deprived. Limping around the house. And having weird symptoms from nutritional deficiency. At some point, I said, you know what? I I have to turn this around. I'm a fighter. I'm not going to sit here and take it. And I didn't want to go to the medical doctor. Because I went to the medical doctor in early March, and all they did was scare the snot out of me. That's all they did. And and I went out of fear. I know the medical doctor can't really do anything. They're just not... They're just not trained in chronic stuff. So, I said, you know what? I'm going to go to a nature path, a local nature path. I found two. One of them took my insurance and one of them did not. But the one that took my insurance was backed up. So I couldn't see him for like a month. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go with the nature path, pay out of pocket, and get myself on track. So I did that. My CRP marker was a 6.1. Uh, If you don't know what CRP is, that's C-reactive protein, and that's a marker for cardiovascular inflammation. That basically means you're at risk for heart attack. And I just couldn't believe it. I'm like, I'm a 10-year vegan. I've done all this fasting. I've eaten all this delicious fruit and vegetables and I, I don't I don't even get sick. I, I had three colds in ten years. Like I thought I was bulletproof. How does someone get at risk for heart disease like that? And I was just I was baffled. I was baffled and I was scared. My my alkaline phosphate was also mildly high. And I'm just like, what? This is crazy. But as it turns out, nutritional deficiency causes heart disease. And oils, I'll also mention, but that's another topic for another day. But the essential fatty acids. See... There's that old joke, where do you get your protein? That's what they would ask vegans. Where do you get your protein? It should be, where do you get your essential fatty acids? (laughs) Because you need that vitamin F. It is essential. And I didn't have it. I was deficient. So it's not hard to tell. 
CRP up, EFA's down. Bring the EFA's up, the CRP will go down. Get the nutrition in order, the CRP will come down. So that's what we did. We set a plan. Me and the nature path set a plan. The first nature path helped me. He gave me supplements for sleep and anxiety. And he helped me get my B12 back up. And then when I went to see the other nature path, we started working on the EFAs. And at this point, I was already on the 90 essential nutrients. I got the 90 essential from Dr. Wallach. And it took some time, but my body started recovering. But I also had to change my diet. I got off of the pour four. I I came up with the pour four to make it easy to understand. Um, I'll explain that at another time. I got off the pour four, added the 90 essential nutrients, and started eating wild-caught fatty fish and organic eggs. So I had to break my whole vegan idea. That caused more anxiety. Because I've been vegan, high fruit vegan, hardcore, ethical vegan, like not even wearing leather belts, leather shoes for 10 years. I never promoted myself as vegan because I never wanted to like, I never wanted to be in a religion, so to speak. I just wanted to do it for me and the animals, but my essential fatty acids were so low I had to do something I mean my nutritional deficiency was absurd I was in a hole literally in a hole and I had to dig myself out so I had to break through that anxiety and worry and I had to break my belief system so I started eating fish fatty wild caught fish twice a week then I included some eggs um, some bone broth start bringing myself back and I started getting better at some point I realized that he was right about the stress. Stress causes symptoms. And the stress, I'm convinced, caused the stomach issue. And the prostate issue, like the peeing, that comes from the root chakra, and fear can get trapped in the root chakra. These are all things I was learning as I was going. But you know, I, I was a hot mess. I was wearing compression socks for two months. I was alternating ice packs and heat packs on my calves and my back because my back was also hurting. Lower back, upper back, the whole nine yards. And of course... Being a practitioner, I was scared about that. <laughs> then I learned about posture. Basically the perfect storm. Nutritional deficiency, stress, posture, misalignment. That was the other thing I discovered. My osteopath sent me to physical therapy for the calves. And I was not happy with my physical therapy I didn't think that they were really helping me. I felt like they were rushing me. I mean, I learned a few exercises, but, you know, I became passionate about it because I felt like I could do better than my physical therapy. I was like, you know, you can, there's a better way to go about this. It's got to be. So, I actually started looking into it. Like, should I become a physical therapist? And then I was like, oh, three years of school. Uh-uh. I already did that. 
Then I discovered posture alignment therapy by Egoscue. I was like, this is amazing. You know, when your body is misaligned, pain happens. So posture misalignment is essentially the same thing as nutritional deficiency. You may not feel the symptom right away. It creeps up on you. And for me, it was the perfect storm. Everything hit at once, which was probably triggered by my first symptom, which was the the electrical shocks throughout the body. Remember I told you that in episode 90? That's what I experienced in around January 20th. It was just everywhere. My whole body was like electrical shocks. It wasn't neuropathy where it would stay in one place. It was the whole body. That was my first symptom. That was my body screaming, you need nutrition, bro. (laughs) But it took a whole nother month for me to discover that. But that that triggered the fear right there. And embarrassment. That's the assault on the ego. When, when you're already a holistic doctor it, and you're doing good, you help people heal this, that, and the other, and then all of a sudden, it hit, you know, these symptoms hit you. It's like, it, it, it's like, it's like you being a, a world-class martial artist. And, you know, you can kick almost everyone's butt in the world in a fight. But one day, someone comes along who doesn't know martial arts, and they just get that one shot in. Get you right. And they knock you out cold in front of everyone. Like, oh, I thought this guy was a martial artist. So it was embarrassing. It, it attacked my ego. And that triggers something. That's also what happened to me 10 years prior with the intern that attacked me. Remember I told you that story in episode number 20? In the Blue Antelope, I told my story. So it's kind of funny that this is happening again 10 years later. It's like the universe, God, is like, you're not you're not ready yet, man. We got to bake this cake a little longer. We need to do more work on you here. Boom. Let, let, let's, let's send them into a dark night of the soul. Then the fear came down as stress and then caused more symptoms and then the other nutritional deficiencies all came out and it just all happened at one time and it sent me into a spiritual event. And I lost the sleep. So, and my calves. So, Then I got to late April, early May. I started sleeping a little better. And then I went on this incredible crying event episode. I I don't know what to call it. I started, I cried for seven days straight. Seven days straight. I would just all of a sudden break out in tears. Uncontrollably. Weeping. And it would randomly happen. You know, they say pregnant women sometimes go through this. But I remember, you know, the sun would come out. You know, we're just coming off winter, right? And the sun would come out. It would be this new, beautiful spring day. And I'd look out there. And I'd just start crying. And so, looking back, obviously, in hindsight, I was cleansing. There was a lot of emotions coming out. Seven days straight, man. And... One of those was in front of my mom, and I just lost it. I just lost it, man. And it went from 
41-year-old man hugging his 71-year-old mom, it was a little bit more like a five-year-old boy (laughs) and a 35-year-old mom. And I was a little boy and I was just crying violently hard, trying to talk, just a hot mess. And things were just coming up. One day, mid-May, I had a sleepless night and I was pretty upset about it because I was doing better with my sleep and then the sleepless night would just come around. (laughs) Then I developed this pattern where I fall asleep around 8 and wake up at 3, 3 3.30 in the morning (laughs) and that happened for a while. So I had this sleepless night. I was really disappointed and I... I remember I had just gotten out of the shower, I think, and I just started crying. I was just crying, so upset, so sad. What's wrong with me? And then I just looked up and I started talking to God. And I'm telling him, God, you get me through this and I will be your vehicle. I will do whatever I, I I will I'll get sunlight sunny off the ground we'll help the children and in the, in the, in the country it will, I'll do so much good just get me through this please Lord please you know a conversation like that and then I remembered what Andy told me like a month before I had come to Andy when I was at my worst, right? And we were discussing my separation anxiety, my perception of loss, because I was really feeling what's going to happen when my parents die. And I was really feeling that. And I'm like, Andy, well, what do I do? What's the affirmation for that? Because we were working on affirmations. And he says, the affirmation is, I am Loved by God. (laughs) I'm like, why that? And he says, because no matter who leaves you in your life, you're always loved by God. That hit me hard, man. Just that day, I started crying when I was doing the affirmation. So anyway, fast forward a month. Here I am. I'm crying. I'm talking to God. And that affirmation pops back down in my spirit. I am loved by God. And I just, I am loved by God. I am loved by God. And it just exploded into this feeling of gratitude and the tears changed to gratitude. I'm sitting there on my knees and just a week or so earlier, I had discovered Emmett Fox. I discovered Emmett Fox through... Tony Robbins. I was watching motivational videos on YouTube. You know, I'm a big fan of YouTube University. (laughs) And he mentioned that he did the seven-day mental diet by Emmett Fox when he was younger, and it helped him. So I bought the book, The Seven-Day Mental Diet, and that gave me hope. This is like a week, maybe 10 days earlier. And so anyway, I'm sitting here in my room, I'm on my knees, I'm crying, I'm in gratitude. I look over and I see the seven-day mental diet. So I grab it, I open it up, and I'm kind of rereading. I already highlighted, I already underlined, and I, I see him mention, you know, turn your thoughts to something good as explained in the Golden Key. And I'm like, you know what? What is the golden key? I want to know what the golden key is. So I whip out my phone, still crying, and I Google the golden key. And it turns out it's a book. It's it's another book of his 
which is only like eight pages, six pages. <laughs> so I buy the book. It's on the way. And I realize the golden key is gratitude. And he's saying gratitude essentially changes all. Gratitude and love changes all. And my crying episode probably lasts a good 30 minutes. So I go out on the front porch to get some air. Eyes are still a little teary. And I look in front of me, about five feet in front of me at the lawn, and there's a little white flower. <laughs> there's no other flower around. It's just all green grass and this one white little flower. And I'm like, what is that? I get off the porch. I come over to the flower. I'm like kind of poking at it with my hand. And I'm like, huh. Is this for me? I didn't notice it before. I didn't notice it yesterday. I'm like, this must be a sign or something, right? I am loved by God. I just kept saying it. I am loved by God. I remember I went back to my room and I, I hopped on my phone and I text message. I must have text messaged or Facebook message at least 20 people. I am loved by God. I am loved by God. I am loved by God. <laughs> I was rejoicing. I am loved by God. I am loved by God. And this was the turning point of my Dark Night of the Soul event, episode. It wasn't the end of it, but it was the turning point. I ended up telling my mom about what happened. She went out to look at the flowers. She was like, oh that's the star of Bethlehem. I'm like, what? No. We Google it. Oh, my God. It's the star. The name of the flower, the little white flower, is the star of Bethlehem, which is related to Jesus Christ. So the other thing that was wild about it is I was taking Bach flower remedies. They were helping with my anxiety. And one of the Bach flower tinctures I had was the star of Bethlehem. And that's supposedly good for grief when you're in the state of losing something. Grief. And I was like, how cool is this? Wow. Thank you, God. A few days later, the flower wasn't there anymore. From that point on, um, I decided I was going to make a conscious effort to get through this through God because it was feeling good. I would talk to God through the day and I, I switched my YouTube university stuff. I started looking up, you know, Christian stuff. I was looking at preachers and listening to uh, uh, Joel Olstein, T.D. Jakes, Tony Evans, a few others, uh, you know, and just getting in that God zone. I also was like, well, I should use music because music's always helped me before. Music is a mood changer. I hadn't listened to music in a long time. So I was like, you know what? Let me find God music. So I went on my Amazon Prime account and I found as much God music as I could. And it turns out that there's a lot of pop Christian music out there that sounds just like the music on the radio, but it's... It's just, you know, different content. So I start, I started making a playlist. And I started listening to that when I'm driving and whatnot. And it started feeling really good. I started getting into that, that vibe. So from there on out, from like mid-May to mid-June... I'm I'm coming out of it, you know, I'm coming out of it, but I'm still in it. I'm having moments where I'm crying. I'm still having a sleepless night here and there. But, it, you know, now the sleepless night is like, you know, once a week combined with some nights where I'm waking up at 3, 3.30 in the morning. 
Uh, there's still some fear, but it's starting to change. And then the golden key comes, you know, in the mail, and that was a game changer. I read the golden key. I read the whole essays, all his essays, and they were just unbelievable. Emmett Fox, what a gift. And then I found it on YouTube, started listening to it on YouTube, and I started practicing the golden key. And it helps tremendously. Then one day I'm at the chiropractor. I remember it's a Saturday. And uh, um, afterwards they do what's called TENS, which is these little electronic shocks. So I'm like, let's do my calves. I want to do my calves. Because before we were doing my back. So we put the little le- electronic shocks on my on my calves. And I'm laying there, I'm face down, and there's a masseuse, and he's doing it for me. He's putting it on my calves, and we strike up a conversation. And he mentions that he, he used to have a bad back. And I say, oh, you used to have a bad back. Well, what cured it? And he goes, oh. He's like, well, I tried everything. Nothing worked. And he was like, then... I found out I had some unresolved issues. I had some emotions. And he was like, as soon as I resolved those issues, my back pain went away. And I was like, no kidding, huh? Huh, pretty cool. So I leave the chiropractor. Uh, I call one of my good friends. Well, he's got news for me. My good friend is telling me that he got into a fight with someone and... The stress of the fight caused his heart to go out of beat and his stomach digestion to mess up. He and he was even went to the emergency room. And he was messed up for like a week. And I'm like, oh dude, that's 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 it. That's the stress. So we have that talk, you know, I give him some tips, et cetera, et cetera. Then I go home and I make lunch and I like to watch YouTube when I make lunch and I'm watching this interview of a podcast with Dr. Weil. He's one of my favorite doctors, Uh, W-E-I-L, Dr. Weil. And he starts talking about the mind-body connection. And he, he says, well, there was a doctor named Dr. Sarno in New York, and he this, that, and the other, and he helped people cure back pain and this pain and that pain, and he helped Howard Stern and Larry David and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I pause the YouTube video, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so I Google Dr. Sarno, and I'm like, holy crap. I start watching his videos. I order his book. And I'm like, this is a message from God. I just went from the guy at the chiropractor's office telling me his back pain went away when he resolved an issue, an emotional issue, to my friend saying that he's all messed up because of an emotional fight and then finding out about Dr. Sarno from Dr. Weil on YouTube. This all happened in a a stream of three or four hours in the same day synchronicity man I'm like okay okay the next day now my aunt and uncle were here that weekend they were visiting this is the first time we've had company in the you know the pandemic and everything and my uncle's always been pretty fascinated with my work so uh, he was a up, I, I usually go, I'm up early, so I'm out on the deck. He comes out. We start talking. He's asking me about my work, this, that, and the other. I'm telling him about the book I wrote. I forgot to mention that to you. I wrote a, I wrote a small book called Food Divorce, which is about food addiction. Just, you know, a few weeks earlier from this moment. And I start telling him about nutritional deficiency and how serious it is. And I'm telling him this, that, and the other, and blah, blah, blah. I'm telling him about posture alignment and blah, 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 blah. And he's all into it. And then they all went out to lunch or whatever. And then I go back out to the front porch. I'm reading my 
pain-free book from Peter Gaskew. And my mind is starting to run through all this new knowledge that I have. And it's like these seeds are planted in my spirit and I, I'm feeling good because I was just educating my uncle. And it was the first time in so long that I was using my knowledge for good. And I'm like, wow. I'm feeling like I can help other people. I'm feeling like maybe Dr. Reese should go back into practice and take in clients. And I'm also feeling good about my calves. I went for a walk with no compression socks because I said to myself it's stress it's got to be stress it wasn't caused by stress it was caused by nutritional deficiency and posture misalignment but why is it still there stress TMS the mind body syndrome Learned from Dr. Sarno the day before. That was a big turning point. I haven't stopped walking since. And I haven't worn my compression socks since. And my calves have gotten better. Much better. I went on the longest walk I've been on in a while this morning, actually. And so, you know, that's what, mid-June maybe? That was mid-June. And that was another turning point. Discovering Dr. Sarno. And starting to feel like I can help people. I even signed up to go back to school and get certified in EGOSCU, Posture Alignment Therapy. Because I think it's that important. And I started, now I knew my now I know my nutrition. That can help so many people. I got down with Dr. Wallach, Longevity. Everyone should be on these 90 essential nutrients. It's essential. Why even risk it? Get on the 90 essential nutrients. Get your posture alignment in order. Get your stress in order. Get your attitude right, you know? These things matter. Get your sleep in order. I started taking my sleep serious. I had to reset my circadian rhythm. I found that. I started looking up. I started researching it. And that's what I did. I put myself on a schedule. And I started changing my sleep. And I started learning about sleep as I'm changing my sleep. It's like I'm in school. I'm learning nutrition from a different angle I'm learning posture alignment I'm learning about the muscular skeleton system about the hips and the knees and the joints and the shoulders and how this is all important to be in alignment and if it's not injuries can happen and I'm learning all this stuff it's like I had to go through hell to learn One day, and I told this story on the episode with Max Ryan, of course, in Miracles. I went to the park one day because I was feeling down, but it was a nice day. I'm sitting on the bench and I'm talking to God. And I look over on my right and there's this like yellow thing by the bushes. I thought it was a light. I walk over to it. <laughs> it's a candle with a note underneath. <laughs> I open up the note and it says, thank you. Keep spreading kindness. I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, on my way out, I, I talked to this older gentleman who was reading a book. We get into a conversation. I'm like, what you reading? He's like, I'm reading George Carlin. I'm like, oh, good. He's like, yeah, I need laughs right now. I'm like, yeah, man, laughing is good. Laughing is good. We need that. I talked to Jerry Williams. His story was inspirational. I had, to, I had him on this podcast. 
inspirational stories like that. Makes you feel good. Mark Pelter, who was on this podcast, he, I got on the phone with him outside of the podcast and he helped me with some things. Getting in touch with my inner child. He went through a dark night of the soul. Around my age, actually. It happens. It's like a beach ball. You know, all these wounds and emotions, you're trying to keep them underwater by holding a beach ball underwater, but it keeps wanting to come up. And that's what happens when you walk the spiritual path as a seeker. These beach balls want to come up above the water. Or as Mark Pelter put it, a, a, a whale breaches the water to get air. Because <laughs> it's a mammal, right? So these emotions are coming up. And I'm dealing with them and I'm still going through it at the time of this recording. There are days where I break out into tears. There are days when I feel some fear. There are days. But I'm I'm handling it. I'm going through it. I know the worst is over. March and April were the darkest. It was two months of darkness. Late January and February, they were, they weren't dark, they were just anxiety filled. The darkness came when I lost the sleep. And then you know, I had to rebuild myself back. The second nature path I went to, he's been running blood tests, so we're, we're up on the blood tests and, you know, I understand it better now and I can read blood tests better and... You know, I don't need a doctor. I'm my own doctor. And I had to go through some darkness to become my own doctor. And now I can help other people. I feel so bad for people because when somebody hits that darkness, that nutritional deficiency, that posture alignment and the fear and all this, where do they go? I feel like I'm almost like a one-stop shop. You come to me, I can help you. Because I've been there. Versus doing what I did. Going to the physical therapist. Going to the regular therapist. Going to the nature path. (laughs) Going to the osteopath. Going to the chiropractor. Going to this person, that person. Next thing you you know, you're back and forth to the doctor like you're an 80 year old woman and that's not healthy because that messes with your mind and your attitude you're going to learn on the Dr. Bernie Siegel episode coming up that attitude is a healer the right attitude is a healer then you'll learn on the Dr. Wallach episode that nutritional deficiency is a thing it's a real thing There's diseases out there and pain out there from nutritional deficiency. Why did my calves go out? I was low in magnesium, low in calcium, plus the stress, plus the lack of sleep. Boom, perfect storm. Why did it last two months instead of two weeks? Because it's PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. The mind remembers the awful event and it repeats it and repeats it and repeats it. So how do we get out of that? The golden key. Go back to episode 105. Listen to it five times. The golden key. Combined with the right nutrition. I had to go through all this so that I can help you. And I'm still climbing out of the hole. I'm still getting better. I'm still trying to improve my sleep. I'm still improving my nutrition. It's not going to change overnight. I definitely am still working on my posture. 
I do my Egoscue exercises every morning. My calves are getting better. My back is getting better. It, this is amazing. I literally am living a Rocky movie. The underdog. Rocky three, you know, getting his butt whooped by Clever Lang and losing his manager and everything happening at once and having to go through that depression and then coming back and getting that victory. Or the 50 Cent story after he gets shot up. You remember the movie? And he's like in hiding, recovering, walking again. You know, this, this I'm living that. Right now, at the time of this recording, by the time you hear it, I will have advanced even more because, you know, my episodes are early, right? So, the dark night of the soul, it happens. Anything can trigger it. But you have to know that it's not forever. It's not forever. It's an episode. It's an event. It may last a few months. You know, I'm going on like almost month six now. But I'm feeling so much better. And I'm feeling much more compassionate and loving. And I just wish you all the best. Hope to see you inside the Patreon group if you want to support this podcast and support my work. I would appreciate that. The link is below. I'm thinking about starting a a Facebook group too that's free. Peace over pain is my new catchphrase. Peace over pain because you can choose peace over pain you can you really can so yeah thank you for listening we'll talk soon thanks for listening to inner peace with dr reese if this episode opened your heart feel free to share on social media and tell your loved ones also be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode Until next time, may peace be with you.